Great afternoon, great afternoon. We are still on an intentional course. And we have been digging deep into the scriptures. And I think it's important now because in the age, on the time frame, there's so much deception that the Lord has laid it on my heart to dig deeper and to see um, how great this deception is. And that it's impossible to come out of it without Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's impossible to come out of this great deception without Jesus Christ. When he said he is the way, the truth, and the life, we don't understand how deep this deception is. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about the schisms. We know there's all kinds of churches and, you know, what denomination you are. That's one part of this apostasy and this schism. It's a part of this deception because remember, we, we learned the other day the church is not divided. We talked yesterday about the body of Christ is one. So how do we get all these denominations and these all various uh, uh, um, doctrinal teachings? It's because of the schism, splintering, and the uh, apostasy. Okay? And some people say, well, how can we know what, what to really do with all these, you know, all these various. So we're going to go back to um, the edict, I think it's 3, 312 in Rome, when the Christians was under persecution. And then I think Constantine saw this, the symbol of the, of the cross. And because Rome was pagan, 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 pagan. Okay, and the Christians was under persecution. They were being slaughtered and, 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 and uh, put in the arenas and, and burned as torches and everything. Because when Christ came, I think one of it said, uh, he's turning the world upside down. Okay. But the gospel was going, as Paul said, he was bound, but the gospel was not bound. So the truth, the light had come into the world. And as I was studying the light of the gospel of Christ, it made me think about the scripture referring back in when um, the light bearer, which the scripture describes the light bearer as Lucifer, but he was cast down. And so now the church is the light bearers. We are carrying the light of Jesus Christ. And therefore, they love darkness rather than light. So therefore, they want to put all the lights out. Okay. And you are light. If Christ is in you, then you are light. That's why the church came under so much persecution. And since then, they have had these schisms. And um, I was looking, talking to my son, on, on, and uh, he was talking about the schisms and the splintering and went all the way back to this particular paper he said came out in 22. Um, but we're going to get into that. That's talking about the, um, the intelligence, the, the robots, how, how vast this deception is getting so even the machines is going to get involved with deceiving people, you know, with these uh, holograph images and stuff. All this deception is getting deeper. And the only way you're going to get free, if Christ don't free you, you will not be free. Thank you, Jesus. He, will, he is the only one that can free us from this great, great deception. And it came all the way back from the day when the church was, they would try to kill all those who was a, a part of the body of Christ. Okay, they tried to come against the body of Christ, but the scripture said the gates of hell shall not prevail because God is always going to keep his light, which is the church, the city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. So we talking about, and then we're going to see how much, how far this infiltration or this schism has have moved off into the various churches. Now, you know, there's no churches in Christ. There's one body. Corinthians tell us that. It's only one body, one faith, uh, one baptism, one Lord, and one baptism. Okay, so there's only one church. So how do we get all this This, this cause of this um, splintering? So let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you. Give us an ear to hear, hallelujah, and a heart to receive your word. And if we have been gone off in anything other than being rooted and grounded on the solid rock, the rock is Christ. He is the head of the church. And every single member, wherever we are on this earth, thank you, Jesus. We have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, purchased with the blood of the Lamb. Then we are in the church. It is a triumphant church. The gates of hell shall not prevail it. 
It's not about uh, denominations. It's not about buildings. I think it's not about anything except you. You are the foundation. And Apostle Paul said, be careful how we build upon that foundation. We pray that this truth will come. And if we are in anything that you have not established, we know it will come down. Help us to be rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. Thank him for this word, O oh God, and for the, the scripture declare that we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. We want to be free, walking in the light of your word, baptized with the Holy Ghost and power, filled with the Holy Spirit, Lord God. And hallelujah, we seal until the day of our redemption. We give ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are going to go to the scriptures. And um, I was talking about the schisms and talking about uh, um, talking about um, the things that is going on in this world. I want to tell you about, about the apostasy. So we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians. And these schisms. Since everyone who knows that the church was established on the day of Pentecost, okay, founded and established on Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And then it talks about abiding in the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ. But even as I was reading Paul, Paul began to talk about uh, in, the t in the church, there was one particular man who had started with them. His name was Dez or something. But I'm, I'll go back and look at that. He said the man wanted to go uh, into the world. So even when the first church was on the earth, in the first years when the church was established, you had doctrine. Paul was always dealing with these damnable doctrines. And in fact, he kept saying, is, is Christ divided? We're going to Corinthians, the first chapter, uh, verses 13 to 17. And we see this schism didn't just start now, but it's broadened. Thank you, Jesus. So, First Corinthians, the thirteen, uh, uh, First Corinthians, the first chapter, the thirteenth verse. We're going there. So this schism didn't just start. So it's been a, a bombardment against the the, the truth, because the this Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. So he, when people don't want to abide by the truth, they begin to give it their versions of it, like you see in Genesis. Well, God doesn't really mean that you're going to surely die, okay? But God, I'm told him the day that you eat, you're going to surely die. So here comes uh, the adversary coming and tell you, he doesn't really mean that, okay? So you got these various uh, things that's coming in, and you're going to see them manifested in various de denominations and the various forms uh, creating the apostasy. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, First chapter, verse 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Cephas and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in my own name. I baptize you. I baptize also the house of Steph Stephanias. Besides, I know not in, uh, whether I baptize any of you. For Christ sent not me to baptize but to preach the gospel. Um, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Okay, so it's the cross of Christ where the current church is founded upon the blood and the sacrifice of Christ. Christ being the first sheaf. Okay. Um, for the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to naught the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Where, who is the disputer of this world? It didn't say disputers. It said the disputer of this world. Has not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. For the Jew require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Greeks. How many Greek organizations are still flourishing? Flourishing. And so many of our people are hooked up to the Greek organizations. 
and they make very clear, and they also have deities attached to every single organization. They have another uh, idol or, or deity or entity attached to that organization. The Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, but unto the Greeks, foolishness. But to them which are called both Jew and Greek, the Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than man and the weakness of God is stronger than man. Okay? That is 1 Corinthians. And we're going to go to Matthew. So we see the house of God is not divided. But what coming in the midst of the is the Greek seeking wisdom and, and all of these uh, calling stumbling blocks. Thank you, Jesus. Casting stumbling blocks to uh, um, to people who who are seeking after wisdom talks about Christ Himself is the foundation of our faith, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. His blood and His His sacrifice on the cross, and then receiving Christ, not denominations. I'm a Baptist. I've been a Catholic. I, if Christ is not the center. Not no side doctrine. Thank you, Jesus. Paul said, I preach Christ, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. This is how we get all this venture, okay? This is how you get the schism. This is how you get the apostasy because men come in with their own interpretation. In fact, the scripture said, the carnal minded man cannot comprehend. So in order to really be, uh, as I told you the other day, the veil of, is upon the face of the people until they get Christ. And I'm talking about accepting Christ in here. I mean accepting him in your heart. I mean being having the witness of God come to your soul. Thank you, with God's spirit. And let you know I've you have heard from me. Not shaking the preacher's hand. Not going through all these little rituals that people going through, all these pinches and stuff they got to say, all this, think about shut to all this here, but Christ himself, look at the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Didn't Christ himself speak to him? And you will have the same experience when the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ, come upon you, okay? So we talk about the church and we talk about schism. So now we're going to Matthew because... This is, we are moving on, but sometimes the deception is so unseen. Like some people say, well, I've been in the church all my life. I've been in the building. I've been in tradition. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, such a calling the traditions of men, putting the traditions of men as the teachings of God. Okay, Matthew 12, 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed, is that the right one? Okay. With devils, uh, with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and the dumb both spake and so. And all the people were amazed and said, "Is not this the son of David?" But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, "This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub and the prince of the devil." So they, the work that Christ was doing, they attributed it to the devil. But this was Jesus. Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, "Every kingdom." Divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, Thank you, Jesus. Then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first buy the strong man? Then he shall spoil his house. He that is not with me is against me. This is Jesus' word. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So we see here God is making it very clear, all the way down to verse 30. Okay? Beginning at the 22nd verse. So the kingdom of heaven is not a building. And as I was studying about um, John 8, the chapter, verses uh, 31, how do we, first of all, how do we get into the church of God? It is to accept in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. 
Thank you. It's not by shaking preachers' hands. Preachers don't have the power, first of all, to even give you the Holy Ghost. Not one preacher on this earth can give you the Holy Ghost. Boss, shut up. John the Baptist told you only Jesus can baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Only Christ. So that means you have to talk to Jesus. And the, the work that the church is doing, as I was studying about the fallen angel who was the light bearer when he was cast down, God has now given us the light of the gospel of Christ. We are the ones now with the light of Christ in us. Thank you, Jesus. We have been uh, filled with the presence of God, the presence of Christ, whom Christ himself is the light of the world. And we are now a part of him. So we have his light in us. And we are now carrying Christ. That's why when you go into something, people can discern, mm, Jesus is here. I remember when I first got saved going, I mean, first got saved, the Spirit of God fasting and praying all the time, going on the bus. People who was going through demonic uh, experiences would be hollering Jesus because they could sense Christ there. And that is where you know you're in the true church. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, John, the 8th chapter, beginning at the 30, 30th verse. Okay. We're talking about, we're still talking about apostasy. We're talking about schism. And we're talking about how the church has been splintered. The church on the day of Pentecost was one. And you can only get in the church. But denominations begin to bring, to spring up from the edict. Of, of, I'm going to read some of the stuff that I got. It's talking about when they begin to um, have a controversy about the doctrines of Christ. Man interceded and put his own interpretation Men who did not have God in them, he wasn't in them. Okay, there was, uh, in fact, Roman Catholic Church was killing the uh, through uh, them not accepting Catholicism. Many of the true believers were killed because they did not come underneath the the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, John eight verses thirty one. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. If, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you, make you free. Not set you free. You got the word, got to make you. <laughs> you got to make you a new creature. It ain't just setting you free, because you, be, you could be bound up and be a de demon, and it set you free, and then you run around still doing all your crazy stuff. Okay? But, he said, the word, the truth shall make you free. You shall be made free. And it says, the truth it shall make you free. It made me think about when Jesus was being examined, and then Pilate asked him, what is truth? And so you have this, the philosophy or the teachings of relativi relativity, okay? Which relativity is when people say, you know, truth is relative, Okay, you got that philosophy today. Truth is relative, meaning it's 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 based on the person who is uh, uh what they believe. That's how everybody can go and do their own thing. That's a still schism and apostasy. That philosophy, going continuing on, because it's fighting against the truth. They had a, we had a paper on relative relativity relativity. Relative. <laughs> anyway, you do it. I'm, I'm going to give you some information on it. And I did download it. And um, it means relative. What is relative to me is, is truth. What, you know, like some people say, well, it can't be just one way to God. God, is, there must be something else. They're using relative. You know, it's relative. What is it's to you is not the same thing to me. But the scripture clearly declared there's only one way to God. And that is through Christ. Then my son gave me some... Um, he gave me, and I was talking today as we I go in the conversation. There's a paper that came out. He says that uh, um, generative language models and animated influence operations, emerging threats and potential um, um, mitigations, teaching about the the now using AI to do uh, virtual worlds and and 3D and, and holograms and all of this here, that's how sophisticated it's getting. 
to the point where when I first started talking about when you look at TV, they had subliminal messages coming in the advertisement while you're watching a picture. Subliminal messages would come on about food and certain things. And now it gets to the point with these um, phones and stuff, they are able to, um, I mean, real sophisticated where they're going to use the machines to actually create the images and faces. And how will you know what's real? How will you know what's real if you're not accepting Christ, Jesus, not a religion, not a religion at all. I'm talking about accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then I begin to look at the, um, uh, in 313, the Edict of Milan. And it was um, just before the becoming of the emperor of the Roman Empire. The Constantine accepted Christianity. The following years, Constantine convinced um, the emperor to join him to in proclaiming toleration of Christianity. And they wrote this, resulting in the Edict of Milan providing religious freedom for Christians because they were persecuting Christians, but he saw the cross. Okay, then it says um, Constantine reigned as sole Roman emperor. So that was around three. 113 AD. Then you see Rome begin to influence. And the, the Rome had a whole lot of uh, philosophers. Okay. They begin to come in and infiltrate the church and infiltrate the doctrine of church. Like you see all these Greek organizations, all these secret societies. They begin to bring all this into and to influence. And if you know history, so you got to tie history in to this here apostasy and this schism. And during this time in 312, you can see how the world began to invade the church doctrine. And it, it's getting worse now because I would say it's been continuing. Even in some churches, when they say you need a 501c3 to preach. And now if you're going to preach, you got to obey the doctrine or the, the policies or political opinion of the government. They went back there in Rome. You couldn't have a church unless you uh, in, in, involved what the Roman government wanted. So this is all talk about apostasy. And then you get heresies out of these, all of these teachings. There's one church, one Lord, one baptism. So we continue on this and see so many of us have come up under these um, uh, organizations or in this world where we born in a time where it's, you have Masons in the church completely. You have Greek organizations. I'm a Christian and I'm that. Not a, that's not how it started. It's not how it started. So when you go back to see how this splintering and this schism begin. That's why you got all these splintered churches and people who don't even have the Holy Ghost. They don't even have God in them and creating a religious system. Okay? But we talking about being set free and Christ done told you uh, the truth shall make you free. <coughs> the truth shall make you true, free. And the truth is God himself. He is the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of grace. And until you receive the spirit of grace, the spirit of truth, he, we learned before in Corinthians, your eyes are blind, even though you're reading the letter, but your spirit is still in darkness. That's why people can accept all this stuff, except because they haven't accepted Christ. Christ Jesus is the only one that can free you from this apostasy, schism, splintering various churches there's only one church there's a lot of denominations being portrayed you got mormon jehovah witness you got uh episcopalians you got this you got that you got this all kind of baptists and and everything i'm a baptist i'm a this you got to be saved i'm you you got to be born of the spirit of god then you are in the church the real church the spiritual church not the building okay and you can only get that through the word and the word penetrating, as Pastor uh, Cable saying, your heart being softened by the word of God. So that the word can get down there into the heart. And then you can repent. Realize you need to be saved. Because some people are so religious. 
I don't know. I don't have nothing to be um to repent for. I'm, I've been a good girl. My mama, like one girl told me, I had a real mother and father. I wasn't born a bastard. I said to myself, Jesus, you still was a bastard as far as God was concerned because you ain't born of his son. Then you ain't, you still ain't, you may have had an earthly father and mother, but you still need salvation. You may have learned all the things, the letters of the Bible, but that doesn't give you new birth. You, you may have gotten degrees, but that won't give you eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. We are still studying because this is, to me, is examination. After you really see how the schisms and the splintering and the division and how the, 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 um, all the time they were coming against the truth, how they have made other uh, uh, doctrines to come in which we didn't get to the Balaam and the Nicolaitans and Jezebel, but all that you can see is the same thing, allowing, this is just coming, leading up to that, okay? So this here particular paper that my son said they get rid of, is 84 pages, I'm going to try to read it, okay? This 84 pages talking about this, this AI, um, and I may attach it for those who are interested in learning what it's about. Anyway, you can't hardly see it, but anyway. I'm going to try to put it, if you're interested in reading, because it's talking about what they have purpose, and it's talking about to a mass deception. You're going to tell a hologram. You can't tell if it's a person's face. You're not going to be able to tell anything. You don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> you don't know what you're looking at. That's why you've got to have God on the inside of you. You've got to have the Holy Spirit, period. And you can only get the Holy Spirit when you accept Jesus Christ. First, repent of your sins. Ask Christ Jesus, the one that was on the cross. And Paul said, if they preach any other Jesus, any other Christ, let them be a curse. I'm talking about the Christ that was on the cross. The one that was hung out and, and laid down his life. The one that the Romans crucified. Thank you, Jesus. The one that was on Calvary cross. That Christ, not some other Christ, but the one that was on Calvary cross. And what he said, that's why you have to get back to the the scriptures talking about what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Now don't have somebody else take that, that, that word and chew it up for you and give you their interpretation of it. But you need to have Christ himself talk to you. And that's when you say, Lord, I need to be saved. I want to be saved. Come into my heart. And he said he'll come in and make his abode. Some people don't even... Because there's so much deception between all of these denominations. People don't know what's going on. But Jesus just said, you should know the truth. And the truth is, Jesus said, I, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. It can't get past it. You've got to have Jesus Christ. Now I'm talking about Jesus Christ that, that laid down his life on Calvary Cross. Thank you, Jesus. That's the, oh, Preach Christ. Paul said, I preach. I refuse to know anything among you saving Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay, so we're still moving forward dealing with apostasy and how serious it is and how deceptive and how, how um, it's gone out from the time the church started. Paul began to talk about people in the midst who was fighting against, who had turned back. I know you can't read the scriptures without finding out how many times he was challenged and he had to go and confront them. Concerned. He said, who, who did bewitch you? Who did bewitch you? So you had witchcraft working. And you had people who, uh, uh, from obeying the whole truth. This thing, salvation is so um, serious. It's not impossible to make it without God. It's about shutter. It's impossible without Christ to even think about being saved. Because the deception is so in between witchcraft and philosophers and 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 uh, and this self and everything, it's not. God is the one. He said He's the one that saved. He's, he's the Lord save me, save us all, Lord God. Because there there are so many who are uh, Paul talking about being shipwrecked and led astray throughout the scriptures. So we really need to know. Thank you, Jesus Christ, Jesus preach Christ Jesus and Him crucified. We're still talking about apostasy, talking about schism. And some of this uh, material, I could give that little upload with the paper that I'm going to be reading. Talking about how they had um, planned some serious stuff. So you don't even know what you're looking at. You're not going to know what you're looking at, period. You're going to have to say, if God ain't on the inside of you, you ain't going to be able to discern this thing. 
And Paul said he didn't come with the ecstasy of, 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 of knowledge. He didn't come with the wisdom of this world, but with the power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. And even talk about the end time, the enemy is going to be doing some miracles. So you've got to have God on the inside of you. Thank you. So let's pray. I'm still studying. And I'm still asking God, help us all. We are here to put each other in remembrance of the scriptures, okay? Father, we thank and praise you for this YouTube channel, Searching the Scriptures. For in them we think we have eternal life, but they are they which do testify of you. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to have an ear to hear and a heart that this word will fall on good ground, take root in our lives. Apple should that we might bring forth fruit, and that fruit shall remain. Help us, O oh God, in this time that we would have this wisdom of God, discernment. Thank you, Jesus. And grow up in you, Lord God. Be our succosia. Be able to grow up and eat the meat of the word, Lord. Not laying again the uh, repentance over and over again, repenting for the same thing, Lord. But to go on and mature in you, Lord. We ask you to have your way in each and every one of us. I pray for every soul that listens to this YouTube channel. That your will, your way, and your word will be done in them, through them, and for them. For we put ourselves into your hands. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. So we're talking today about schism. Okay? That's what this is going to be talking um, We talked the other day, and we're still talking about the schism and the apostasy that's in. And the only way you're going to avoid this here is you got to get born again. You have to accept. That's the only way. You can't do it intellectually. Because you these philosophers, you talk about these Greeks, they seek after knowledge. They seek after knowledge and knowledge. And that's how they got so many people with all these various secret organizations. Because they tell, I'm going to tell you something you didn't know. That's going back to the Garden of Eden with the serpent. Okay, help us, God. Please push the light in the button and continue as we are going to stay seeking after the Lord, our Savior. If we draw near to him, the scripture said he will draw near to us. And we are seeking him. He is our desire. Okay, be blessed in Jesus' name. Continue to push the like button.